Hello, this is Abby from ollieholly.com. Welcome to day five of my 12 days of appliques crochet along. Today's video, I'll be showing you how to crochet this peppermint candy. Here are the materials I'll be using to make my peppermint candy. I'm using sheep's katona and candy apple and bridal white. The hook I'll be using with it is a 2.75 millimeter crochet hook. Additionally, I'll be using a tapestry needle, a stitch marker, a pair of scissors, and for blocking, I'll be using a bowl of cool water, a washcloth, some pins, and a blocking mat. To finish the backing, I'll be using white felt, some Gorilla fabric glue to attach the felt to the back of my applique. And for cleanup, I'll be using some paper towel and a toothpick. To cut the felt out, I'll be using a sharp pair of scissors. If you want to follow along with a written pattern, you'll find the printable PDF in my shop on ollieholly.com. The link will be in the description box down below. To receive future updates on new patterns, sign up for my newsletter in the link in the description box down below. To make the stitches easier to see on camera, I'll be using orange in place of white and teal in place of red. To start, I'm making a magic circle with my white yarn. Hold down the yarn tail like so, then wrap the working end around your finger and cross it over the yarn tail. Wrap the working end of the yarn down the back of your hands, then flip your hand over. Insert your hook under the right strand and over the left. Pull the left strand under the right then turn the hook up towards yourself to create a loop on your hook. Yarn over and pull it through the loop on your hook. If you need some help with the magic circle or to see it worked a little bit slower, I have a more dedicated video tutorial and I'll link it down below. Into the magic circle, make six single crochet. I'm working the yarn under single crochet in this video. So I'm inserting my hook into the circle making sure to go under both the circle and the yarn tail. Yarn under, so I'm wrapping from the front to the back, pull a loop up, then yarn over and pull it through the two loops on the hook. That's one. So into the circle, yarn under to pull a loop up, yarn over, pull through the two loops. That's two. So insert, Yarn under to pull a loop up, then yarn over and pull through the two loops. Before continuing on to the next three stitches, I'm going to secure the tail from the red yarn by carrying it behind the next three stitches. To do so, I'm going to start my next stitch. So I'm inserting my hook into the circle, pull a loop up, then I'm just going to hold my circle to keep the loop from unraveling. Next, I'm laying the yarn tail, so that's the red yarn tail, over the working end of my yarn over here. Yarn over with your white yarn, then pull through the two loops on your hook to complete the stitch. So you can see that the red yarn tail is secured into the back of this stitch here. Continue to crochet the red yarn into the back of the next two stitches. So insert into the circle, making sure that your hook is going under that red yarn tail. Yarn under to pull a loop up. Then yarn over and pull through the two loops. So that's five. Then I'm going to work one more single crochet. So I'm inserting. Yarn under to pull a loop up, yarn over, pull through the two loops. So that's six. Pull on the tail from the magic circle to fully tighten that circle in the center. In round two, increase into each stitch all the way around. To increase is simple. Just work two single crochet into each stitch. However, for this applique, we're going to be alternating between working white and red yarn. We'll be working in continuous rounds, so I'm going to work my first stitch straight into the first stitch from the previous round. 
insert, yarn under with the white yarn and pull a loop up. Then I'm going to drop the white yarn, pick up the red yarn, and I'm going to yarn over with the red yarn and pull it through the two loops on my hook. So what we're doing here is basically just changing the color of the top loops of the next stitch. Into the same stitch that we just worked into, I'm going to work another stitch. So insert, I'm going to yarn under with the red yarn, pull a loop up, and then because in the next stitch we're going to switch to white, I'm going to drop my red yarn and pick up my white yarn. Then I'm yarning over with the white yarn and I'm pulling it through the two red loops. So let's see that again. I'm going to insert my hook into the next stitch and I'm going to yarn under with the white yarn and pull a loop up. Then I'm going to drop my white yarn and pick up my red yarn, then yarn over and pull it through. Then back into the same stitch, I'm going to insert yarn under and pull up a red loop. Then I'm going to drop my red yarn, pick up my white, yarn over and pull through. Pause here to continue increasing into each stitch, making sure to alternate between colors. By the time you are done with round two, you should have a total of 12 stitches. After round two, this is what your piece should look like. And at this point, I'm going to trim the yarn tails just to get them out of my way. In round three, we're going to be alternating between working one single crochet, then increasing in the next. Repeating that all the way around. So that's single crochet increase, single crochet increase, single crochet increase, and so on. For this, the single crochet will be white and the increase will be red. So I'm going to insert my hook into the first stitch, yarn under with the white yarn to pull a loop up. Then I'm going to drop the white yarn, pick up the red, yarn over and pull through. Next, work an increase. So I'm inserting my hook into the next stitch. Then I'm going to lay my white yarn over the hook like so, just so that I can carry it into the back of this stitch that I am currently working. Yarn under with the red, pull a loop up. Yarn over with the red, pull through. Then back into the same stitch, insert, yarn under to pull a red loop up. Then because we'll be working a white stitch in the next stitch, I'm going to drop my red yarn, pick up my white, yarn over, and pull through. I'm going to work one more set with you. Into the next stitch, insert your hook, Yarn under and pull up a white loop. Then drop the white yarn, pick up the red, then yarn over and pull it through the two white loops on your hook. Insert into the next stitch. Make sure that you're laying the white yarn tail over your hook like this. Then yarn under and pull up a red loop. Yarn over with the red and pull through. Insert back into the same stitch. Yarn under to pull up a red loop. Then drop the red yarn, pick up the white. Yarn over and pull it through the two loops on your hook. 
pause here to continue working round three. By the time you are done with this round, you should have a total of 18 stitches. After round three, this is what your piece should look like. In round four, we're going to be alternating between working an increase, then working two single crochet. So increase, two, increase, two, increase, two, and so on. For this round, the increase is going to be white and the two single crochet will be red. So a good way to remember which color to work is to just match your color to the color of the stitch you're working into. Into the first stitch, we're going to work an increase. I'm inserting my hook into the stitch, laying the red yarn over my hook. Then I'm going to yarn under to pull up a white loop. Then yarn over with the white and pull through. Back into the same stitch, I'm going to yarn under to pull up a white loop. Then I'm going to drop my white yarn pick up my red, yarn over, and pull through. I'll be marking the first stitch just so you know where I'm at at all times. Next, we're going to work two single crochet. Insert your hook into the next stitch, lay your white yarn over the hook. Yarn under and pull up a red loop. Yarn over with the red, and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn under, and pull up a red loop. Then drop the red yarn, pick up the white, yarn over, and pull through the two loops on your hook. I'm going to repeat another set of stitches with you one more time. Insert into the next stitch, yarn under to pull up a white loop. Yarn over with the white and pull through. Insert back into the same stitch, yarn under and pull up a white loop. Drop the white yarn, pick up the red, then yarn over and pull through. Next, work two single crochet. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn under and pull up a red loop. Yarn over with the red and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn under to pull up a red loop. Then drop the red yarn, pick up the white, yarn over, and pull through. Pause here to work the rest of this round. By the time you are done with this round, you should have a total of 24 stitches. I'll meet you at the beginning of the next round. After round four, your yarn is likely going to be twisted together due to the constant color change. You can untwist the yarn at any time to make it easier to work with. In round five, we'll be alternating between working two single crochet in white, increase in red in the next stitch, then single crochet in red. Just like the previous round, match your color to the color of the stitch you're working into. Into the first stitch, work one white single crochet. And just like before, I'll be carrying the red yarn along the back of my stitch. So I'm inserting into the first stitch, yarn under to pull up a white loop, then yarn over with the white and pull through. Insert into the next stitch, yarn under and pull up a white loop. Then drop the white yarn, pick up the red, yarn over and pull through. Into the next stitch, we're going to work a fully red increase. So insert, yarn under, pull up, yarn over, pull through, all in red. Insert back into the same stitch and work a fully red single crochet. And finally, insert into the last stitch of this set. Yarn under to pull up a red loop. Drop the red, pick up the white, 
yarn over, and pull through. Let's work through that set together again. Into the next two stitches, I'm going to work one single crochet into each. That first stitch is going to be fully white. In the second, we're going to change the top loop to red. Into the next, we're going to increase, and both of the stitches of this increase will be fully red. Insert into the final stitch of this set and pull up a red loop. Drop the red yarn, pick up the white, yarn over, and pull through. Pause here to work the rest of this round and I'll meet you at the end of this round. By the time you are done, you should have a total of 30 stitches. I've now worked up until the second to the last stitch and into the final stitch, I'm going to work a red stitch, but I'm still going to change the top loops to white. And I'm going to twist the yarn here so that the red yarn gets sandwiched into the back of the stitch. Now that I'm done, I'm going to cut both yarn tails and I'm going to pull up my hook to fasten off. I'm going to work a seamless join in the round so I've thread my yarn tail onto a tapestry needle and I'm locating the second stitch from the final stitch. So one and two. I'm inserting my needle through the top loops of that stitch and out the back and I'm pulling through. Then I'm going to insert my needle back into the center of that final stitch and out the back. Pull through. Weave the yarn tails into the back of your peppermint candy, then tie a tight double knot with the two yarn tails. Trim off any excess yarn. Before we proceed with blocking, I want to show you the difference between a blocked piece and our current piece. The red and white peppermint candy has been blocked. And when you look at it, you'll see that the circle is a little bit more round and the stitches look a little bit more even. And when you look at it from the side, you'll see that it's a little bit flatter. Our current piece kind of puckers on the sides and in the middle. To wet block, fully saturate your applique in some cool water. Squeeze the water out, then lay onto a clean washcloth and press down to wick out the moisture. Pin the applique on the blocking board adjusting the stitches that look out of place. Allow this to fully dry before finishing the back with felt. Cut out a piece of felt to be slightly bigger than your applique and set it aside. I'll be turning my applique into an ornament, so I'm going to glue this loop of yarn to the back of my applique. To do so, I'm going to squeeze a small bead of glue, place the knot from the loop over it, and press down with a toothpick. Allow this to dry a little before applying the glue to the rest of the piece. Attach your applique to the felt and press down gently. Allow this to dry for at least an hour or two before cutting it out with a sharp pair of scissors. Cutting it too early will run you the risk of getting glue onto your scissors. Thanks for following along with this video. If you liked this video, you might like a few of my other videos too. Please consider subscribing and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.